the next six weeks, all the way up until summer, we're going to be studying what the Bible, specifically the book of Proverbs, has to say about friendship. Uh, and for me, it, this is not just like a theoretical series, like, let's talk about something. Okay, let's pick something, and we did friendship. It's, it, it's to me, something that just right now is kind of very... Um, personal and very special. Um, right now, it's just kind of been a season of remembering how important it is um, to have quality friendships in our lives. Uh, because for me, and then I've just kind of, I've kind of shared this with some of you, but I just want to share it with all of you, just so you can kind of be on the journey with me. Uh, this last week was a, a pretty tough week for my family. Um, on Tuesday, kind of um, a little bit expected, a little unexpected. It always is unexpected. My my grandmother on my mom's side passed away, and so um, next weekend I'm going up to the funeral on that. So that was just kind of a heavy thing for our family. And then here's what I know: a lot of you have walked that journey. You know what that's like. Um, you've been there. You, you've experienced the death of a family member. For some of you. Um, um, it, it was someone who died entirely too young and entirely too tragically. Uh, for me, uh, fortunately, praise God, on this one it was not. She was 85 years old. She had had cancer for 13 years. She was just fighting strong and just this incredible lady. And so for us, it was just a cool opportunity to, to celebrate her life, and we're continuing to do that. But then really this week, it just kind of hit me. Like those things hit you, and you just kind of find yourself in this raw space, and then you just realize what kind of people you've actually built into your life. Uh, like for me, it's Tuesday night and I find out and, and, and I get a text from someone just asking how you doing and he's just checking in on me. Uh, and, and then I text back, um, actually, I'm, I'm not doing very well. My grandma just died. And, and then I'm sending the second text message just to kind of follow up, tell him a little more. Uh, before I could even get the second text out, um, my dear friend J.D. Lasky had called me already. And just wanted to pray with me and just wanted to check in on me and just wanted to love me. And it was one of those reminders in my moment of loss how significant and important it is to have friends that matter, friends that care, friends that love you, friends that, are, friends that surround you in hard times and celebrate you in good times. And so that's what we want to do during the Squad Goals series as we take really the next six weeks of high school ministry all the way up until summer to look at what the Bible has to say about friendship. Because you may be surprised to learn that the Bible has a lot to say about friendship. The Bible has a lot to say about the type of people we surround ourselves with. And one of the core beliefs we have, going through the next six weeks and really through the rest of your life that we want you to remember and believe is this. That your friends, your friends, will determine the direction and the quality of your life. Let me say that one more time. This is important for you to remember. Your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. And we say that because of this real simple premise that we believe, and all of you know intuitively, but let me put it into words for you. The people who influence you most are the people who have accepted you. So the people in your life who want nothing to do with you, they've judged you, they've written you off, they've made fun of you, they've said lies about you, they don't know you at all, and you're just kind of like, you don't even know me, and you've rejected me. Those people don't influence you. And so sometimes the fear is like, oh, there's bad people out there who are going to influence us, and that's not really the case. The people who influence you aren't the people who hate you. It's the people who love you. It's the people who accept you. And it's the people who want to be around you. And so I'll say it again, if it's true that the people who love us or the people who accept us, the people who want to be around us are the ones who influence, then it's more true than ever that your friends will impact the direction and the quality of your life. And so here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go to one proverb tonight. In the book of Proverbs, uh, we're going to look at one verse today and just see what that has to say as we open up this subject of friendship and begin thinking about our friends, thinking about the people in our lives, and thinking about what God has for us and how those friends might shape the direction and the quality of our lives. And so I'm going to ask you to do before we get to the scripture. Tonight I'm going to be asking you to do something very, very difficult. I'm going to ask you to evaluate your friends. Listen, I, I need to be really clear on something. Um, this isn't a message for someone else to hear. Like if you're sitting here going, man, I just wish someone else could hear this message. No, no, no. You need to hear this message. In fact, one of the things we believe about our God is that he is in charge of everything, including your life. And so the fact that you're even here tonight means that God wants you to consider this. He wants you to think through your friends. He wants you to consider the people in your life. And those may be people sitting right next to you tonight. And so I'm going to ask you tonight, in the quietness of your own heart, not with the people around you, but in the quietness of your own heart, to consider your friendships. Here's what Proverbs chapter 13 says. 
He says, walk with the wise and become wise. He says, walk with the wise and become wise. So one of the things we believe about our God and one of the things we believe about the scriptures is this, that our God is a promise maker. Well, we just sang that song, my hope will always be in your promises to me. Like there are promises that the God of the universe has made to every single one of you. So that even if you're in this room and you don't consider yourself a Christian or you're just trying to work out this whole Jesus religion church thing and you're just kind of trying to figure this out, we believe that our God makes promises. Even if you don't want to even believe in him, these promises are true for you. And this is a promise of the scripture, that if I walk with the wise, I will become wise. It's a promise. It's a promise that if I walk with people, if I have people in my life, if my squad, if my group, if my group chat, like my go-to people are wise, I'm going to become wise. And before we get too deep into this, I need to take a moment to define wise for you. Because let me be clear, wise does not necessarily mean smart. Wise does not necessarily mean intelligent. And here's what I mean. Um, Maybe all of you know someone in your life who is just like stupid kinds of smart. Like if that's even a thing, right? Like they know how to do algebra kinds of smart. Like like they're so intelligent and they're just the people who are going to go like off to an Ivy League or they're going to go to some prestigious school and you're like barely going to graduate and you're like, you know that person. And then that person is so smart that they're always working on school and they're always studying for like the the SAT or the whatever you kids these days take and they've got this test and they got a hundred thousand on their ACT. You're like, how do they even happen? And you're like, I don't, I don't even get it. There's people who are so smart, but then, but then those same people, and maybe you know, maybe it's you sitting in this room. They are so obsessed with school and grades and testing well and getting into the right college and getting the right scholarship. They are so focused on this one aspect of their lives that they don't care about their spiritual life. They do not care about their family, about their friendships, about their physical health. They don't care about anything else in this world because they're so dialed in. They're so intelligent. They're so school focused. They're so smart. And what I would say about them, if you know a person like that, is that they are incredibly intelligent, super smart fools. Because being wise isn't about being smart. It's not about having high test scores or getting a good SAT score. Being wise is not about intelligence. Being wise is about having perspective. And here's what I mean. A wise person is able to connect the dots in your life that you otherwise haven't been able to connect. So let me just say, if you have ever had a conversation with a friend or relative or your small group leader or anyone in this world, and you've ever had that light bulb moment, have you ever had that light bulb moment where you go, oh my gosh, that's why this is happening. If you've ever had a conversation with someone and it's illuminated why things are going on in your life, you have been speaking with a wise person. Wise people are able to connect the dots in your life. They're able to show you why this is happening and this is happening, and those aren't two separate things, but they're connected. A wise person is able to tell you that if all you do is spend your money on clothes, you're going to be broke. A wise person is able to tell you that the reason you're struggling so much physically is because of your diet. Uh, A wise person is the person who's able to look at you and say the reason you have so much drama in your friend group is because of how much you gossip. A wise person is able to look at you and connect the destructive behaviors in your life with the destructive results that you're seeing in ways that you are unable to. And every one of you knows this intuitively. Every one of you knows that there has been someone in your life at some point in time who has sat you down and told you something, and it's like a light bulb went on. It's like all the dots connected to you. Suddenly, when I understand why this is happening, that's what a wise person does. And here's what the scripture promises. That when I hang out with wise people, When I hang out with people who are going to connect dots for me, people who are going to give me perspective on my life, people who are going to help me understand why things are the way they are in my life and in my heart and in my family and in my school and in my job, when I hang out with those people, the promise of the scriptures is that I am going to become wise. That's an incredible promise and a stunning one at that. 
And some of you have wise people in your life, but you've kind of written them off as boring people. Like, you've just kind of written them off as like, I have this wise friend over there, and when I'm in a jam, I go talk to her because she really helps me out. And I just don't understand how you can read a sentence like this and not just go, I need to spend more time with this person. Because the promise of the scripture is clear. That when I walk with the wise, I'm going to become wise. We believe our God is a promise maker and a promise keeper. And that when we make good on this and say, I'm going to walk with the wise, that we will actually become wise. This is a promise of God in the scriptures to every single person in this room. And then I want you to hear the second half of Solomon's sentence. So this is 3,000 years ago. A guy named Solomon, who is the king of the nation of Israel, is writing down these proverbs. And he begins this way. He says, walk with the wise and become wise. But then here's the next part of the sentence. Next part. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Now there's something I need you to see here. Because you might expect Solomon to say this, if you walk with the wise, you'll become wise. And then you might expect him to say, if you walk with fools, you'll become a fool. You might expect him to say, a companion of fools becomes a fool. But that's not what he says. And I think Solomon did this on purpose. I think he did this for a reason. Because he knows something about you and he knows something about me. What he knows about us is that even if we never participate or become a fool, even if we never do the things that the foolish people around us are doing, we can still be deeply, profoundly hurt by fools. I think what Solomon knows is this, that you don't actually have to be a fool to be hurt by a fool. You just have to be around them. You just have to be their companion. So, so let me just give you a painfully obvious example that no one in this room would disagree with. If you're hanging out with a group of friends and then this one friend says, hey, let's, let's go to this party. And so you end up at a party and everyone's drinking at the party, but you're like, no, 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 no. I, I, he may be a fool and he may be getting drunk, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be his companion. I'm just going to be with this girl tonight. I'm just going to be with this guy tonight. I'm just with them. I'm not going to go do the things they're doing. I am just with them. But then every single person in this room knows if that same fool decides to get behind the wheel of a car and you decide that I'm not the fool, I haven't been drinking, I haven't been doing this, I'm just going to be his companion. And that same fool gets in the car. It says a companion of a fool suffers harm. Um, listen, those of us on staff here in high school ministry have done this gig long enough to know the idea of a high school student getting in drunk behind the wheel of a car and wrapping his car around a telephone pole or a tree and killing everyone in the car is not some hypothetical. It's happened in our community, in our space. And there's been someone every single time in the car who wasn't drinking. They weren't doing anything wrong other than the fact that they were the companion of a fool and they suffered harm. And what I need to do tonight is plead with some of you that you have people in your life and you have convinced yourself that yeah, 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 they're foolish and they do bad things and I know they're not good people, but I just want to be around them and I'm never going to become like them. And here's what I'm just going to promise you tonight. I don't know, like, if you're ever going to become like them, you might not become like them. But I promise you that the fires that happen in a fool's life will burn you. The shrapnel of their exploding life will damage you. As much as the first part of this proverb is a promise, that if you walk with the wise, you'll become like the wise, this is a promise as well. For a companion of fools suffers harm. There's harm. There's harm even when you're not the fool. There's harm even when you're the person thinking rationally. You're the person making good decisions. For you, it's not just about what decisions do you make. The question I need you to ask yourself is this. Eyes right here, don't miss this. What decisions are the people around me making? What decisions are the people around me making? That's what I need you to consider tonight. Because it doesn't need to be you who's foolish for something to ruin your life, for something to blow up on you, for something to take you down, for something to harm you. And so here's what I want to do tonight. 
I want to give you an opportunity to think through this question of, am I companion with fools? Like, am I on the edge of something dangerous? If it's true that a companion of fools suffers harm, the question all of us should be asking if we are wise is this. Am I in danger of harm? Am I in danger of being burned by the fire of someone else's life? And so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Right now, I'm going to give you four statements. They'll be right here on the screen in just a moment. Four statements. And these four statements I want you to consider, and if one of these applies to you, what I'm going to ask you to do is consider the fact that you might be walking on the edge of a cliff. I want you to consider the fact that you may have surrounded yourself with someone or a group of people who are going to harm you. And that those people you think, I just call them every weekend. Or those people, they're they're in my group chat and I just kind of hang out with them. Or I stand with them at school. Or I spend time with them on the weekdays. I want to suggest to you that some of those people might be bringing you harm. So let me give you four statements. The first one is this. If you've ever said to yourself, I'm going to go, but I'm not going to participate. I would argue you are on the edge of danger. And you're on the edge of danger because if you're going to go but you're not going to participate, it means on some level or another, you've decided that whatever participating means is not something you're willing to do. But it's clearly something someone else is willing to do. And so there's already this break. There's already this gap between you and the people you're with. In fact, I would argue if you find yourself constantly in situations where you are the only one not doing something and everyone else in your group, in your squad, in your people, everyone else is doing it, I just want to suggest to you, you might have the wrong friends. You might have the wrong people surrounding you. If you're constantly going, hey, I'll go go to the the party, but I'm just not going to drink. I'll hang out with the people who are gossiping and saying all sorts of slanderous things about someone else, a girl who's not here, but but I'm I'm not going to participate. I was just there. Let me just suggest something to you. If that's the way you live your life, or you're just going to hang out with people, but you're not going to participate in the bad things, but you're going to be close enough to the fire to get burned, you are in danger. Why? Because your friends, your friends are going to determine the direction and the quality of your life. Maybe for some of you, this is ringing off alarm bells. Maybe for some of you, you're starting to go, okay, uh, that's me, and someone's just popped into your mind, or situations from last night, or Friday night, or last weekend, or two weeks ago are starting to come in your mind. This should send off alarm bells. When you start to get into situations like this, this should scare you. Because it means you're walking on the edge of danger. Next slide. If you've ever heard this sentence directed at you, You're not yourself when you hang out with them. Do you know what our typical response to this statement is when someone says, you're not yourself when you hang out with them? Like when you come back from hanging out with them, uh, you're angry, you're bitter, you use more foul language, you start to say things that we just never really said before. Do you know what our typical response in all of our grand maturity as people is? It's defensiveness. It's this phrase that we like would throw back, like, you don't know me. You don't even know the real me. Like, oftentimes when we hear this sentence thrown at us, we get into this posture of defensiveness. But let me just suggest to you, if someone has said this to you in the last six months, this should be sending off alarm bells in your brain. Because someone who has chosen to accept you and has chosen to give you their love and affection and attention, someone who wants you around is changing you so that the people you know and love, the people you have walked with for so long, for so long, are noticing that you're changing. You're not yourself when you hang out with them. Do you see the change? The change in quality, the change in direction, because your friends will determine the quality and the direction of your life. Next one. Something that was never an option has now become one. So so let me float a situation that maybe some of you know exactly what this is like. You're in middle school or you're in freshman year or sophomore year, earlier on in your life, whenever that was, and you're in this time and season and you go, you know what? I am never going to do that thing. 
And you're saying you're never going to do that thing, not even because it's a temptation, just because you see it out in the distance and you go, I don't want anything to do with that. And so some of you were in middle school or you were in early high school and you looked at drinking and you decided that's never going to be something I do. I'm never going to be the girl who gets drunk. I'm never going to be the guy who just gets so wasted he can't remember anything. I'm never going to be that person. So you made that decision. Some of you decided, I'm never going to cross this line physically with a girl. I'm never going to give away that part of me to a guy. I'm never going to be the person who smokes pot. I'm never going to be the person who starts getting into trouble. I'm never going to be the person who gets together with his buddies and decides to go hurt someone. I'm never going to be the person who decides to go steal something or lie about something. I'm never going to lie to my parents. Let me just suggest something to you. If there was a time in your life where you declared that you were never going to do something, and now it's a live option in your life, now it's a temptation for you, now it's something that you've started to do, if that's true of you, let me tell you something. That didn't come out of nowhere. You didn't make this decision that you're never going to do this thing in your life and then wake up one day and just decide to do it. You made a decision that you were never going to do that thing with your life. And then there were people who came along and loved you and accepted you and invited you into something that you swore you would never do. You invited friends into your life because they loved you, because they accepted you, because they were kind, and you allowed them to influence you into a place that you promised you would never go. Something that's become an option that never was before. And some of you right now are squirming because you know. You know you were at camp freshman year. You know sophomore year. You remember being in elementary school and talking to your parents. You remember being in middle of high school and you made some decisions about what was never going to happen in your life, but then you met them and they asked you to do this and you're down this road. And let me tell you something. What you're feeling right now is the truth of the statement that your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. Last statement. If it bothers you that the people who love, who you love and respect, would know who you are with. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you are hiding who you hang out with, like if you ever say to people, hey, hey, don't put this on, uh, on Snapchat. Don't put this on Instagram. I don't want people to see what I was doing. We need to keep this quiet. If you ever find yourself manipulating and controlling who finds out who you hang out with, if you ever find yourself lying to your parents about who you were spending time with, if you ever find yourself embarrassed at the thought that your small group leader or your pastor or your parents or a teacher that you love would be kind of weirded out by the people you're spending time with, if you ever find yourself in that circumstance, alarm bells should be going off in your head. Anytime you find yourself having to hide anything about your life from the people who love and respect you and you love and respect, there's something going on there. There's something that should trouble you. It should scare you when you start to realize that you can't even be honest with the people who you love and respect about who your friends are. That should terrify you. Because you should know it by now, that your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. See, these statements, These statements should send off alarm bells in some of you. And listen, some of you heard this tonight, and there is no one in your life that came to mind. Some of you heard this tonight, and you went, I really genuinely cannot think of anyone that leads me down that road. Praise God for that. Continue to walk on that path. But some of you have been hearing this tonight, and it's just kind of been this uncomfortable feeling inside of you. People have started popping into your mind. What happened last weekend is starting to pop into your mind. What's been going on in your life for the past few years has started to bubble up. And honestly, some of you might be mad at me right now. Some of you may feel like this is none of my business. Some of you may just be defensive 
and angry, and all I would suggest to you is that when you feel defensive and angry, it's because you're defending something, and that defending something may be friends that you have chosen to put in your life. And their foolishness is causing you harm. I'm going to ask you tonight to consider if there are friends in your life that you need to remove. Friends in your life that you need to say, hey, listen, they may be great people. They may be people who have loved you well. They may be people who you've enjoyed being around. They may be people who you had a great time with. You, they may be people who make you laugh. Maybe people who love you. Listen, I don't know what those people are, but I know this. If you have fools in your life, you need to remove them. You need to remove them. It's not unloving to remove unhealthy people from your life. It's not unchristian to remove unhealthy people from your life. Can you love them? Yes. Can you care for them? Yes. Can you pray for them? Yes. Should they be your friends? No. They should not be the people that you allow to influence and determine the direction and the quality of your life. So I don't know what you need to do. Actually, I'm not going to give you a specific thing you have to do. You need to wrestle with the Lord on what needs to happen. I don't know if you need to, if you need to block their number from your phone or delete their number from your contacts. Uh, some of you, this person I've been talking about, this fool who's leading you down the bad path, may be a boyfriend. It may be a girlfriend. Maybe it's time to end a relationship. Maybe it's time to create some space. Maybe it's time to quit some club or organization or team that's filled with people who are destroying your life. Uh, again, I don't know what your thing is, but if there's someone who's been popping into your mind, one of the most foolish and idiotic things you could do is listen to something like this. Know there's someone in your life that's destroying you and do nothing about it. What? good does it do you to come into a room like this, sing a few songs, listen to a guy yell at you, and leave and do nothing? It's what we're called to do. And if you want to be a person who's wise, you walk with the wise. And if you want to be a person who suffers the harm of fools, then continue to hang out with the foolish people in your life. I'm going to invite our band up, and we're going to close with a few songs right now. And so um, before we sing, I do need to make this extraordinarily clear. Um, the reason, the reason that you will fight internally to keep friends around who are foolish, to keep people around who have been clearly destructive and harmful in your life, the reason that is a temptation for you is because there is a fact that is true of all humans, and this is it. It's that for most of us, we would rather have friends who are destructive and unhealthy in our life. We would rather have a squad around us who's full of fools, of idiots who are going to harm us. We would rather be like Timmy at the beginning who has these awful, terrible, horrible, no good friends. We would rather be that than be alone. And some of you know there's people you need to cut out of your life, but it terrifies you because they're the people you go to on a Friday night. And if they weren't around, you would be alone. They're the people you sit with at lunch at school, and if not, you'd be that person who sits alone. And you're terrified because you know you need to make a change in your life. But a change could mean loneliness. A change could mean rejection. A change could mean things aren't right in your life. And what I'm just going to plead with you tonight is that if you have any sense of faith in your life, any kind of thing inside you that says, I trust and believe in God, and who he is and what he's called me to, I'm pleading with you tonight to be brave, to be courageous, to step out in faith and say, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I'm going to do this because I so believe this promise of God that when I walk with the wise, I'll become wise. And when I walk with fools, it's going to harm me. I'm pleading with you to be brave. And that courage doesn't come from inside of you. It's not a courage like, I'm a girl who's been through a lot, so I got this. Or I'm a guy who's tough, and so I'm not worried about things. No, 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 no. It's a courage that says, I believe with all of my heart that there is a God in heaven who loves me and loves me enough to send his son Jesus to die for me and rise from the dead so that when I trust and believe in him, this is the core of our faith and what we believe, that when we trust in Jesus, he saves us, he makes us right with God, and the promise of God applies to us that he will never leave us 
nor forsake us. So that the good news for you, if you're in this room and you're a Christian, is that no matter how many friends you lose or cut out of your life or stop hanging out with or stop spending time with or stop texting, you're never alone. You will never be alone. Because the presence of God will go with you wherever you go. And there may be hard seasons, and there may be struggles, and there may be trials, and there may be all sorts of temptations in your life. There may be all sorts of moments where you feel lonely, and you feel afraid, and you feel awkward, and you feel like you just want something to cling on to, and I promise you that there is a God in heaven who promises that no matter what you do in your life, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that fact alone, that truth about your life and mine, that truth about the universe should make you courageous. It should make you brave. And for some of you, it should make you act tonight, this week. It should make you decide that this is over. I'm changing this. My life is changing from here on out. I'm not going to allow friends who destroy me to be in the picture. And those friends who are wise, those friends who make me courageous, those friends who make me wise, those friends who make me a better person, I'm going to be around them. Because whether you believe it or not, your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. Let's pray. Lord God, um, I want to take a moment to pray for the people in this room, uh, to pray for the people who are struggling right now uh, with who their friends are and how their friends interact with them. God, I, I pray for the girl who's sitting here and she's got people destroying her life and she knows it, but she's so afraid. Pray that you would open her hands tonight for what you have for her. I pray that you would make her brave. I pray that you would make her courageous. God, I pray for the guy who's in this room tonight. He knows the ways he's been going. He knows how people have been leading him down a dark path. I just pray tonight he would stand up tall and be a man. I pray that he would stand up and believe your promise and believe your word and step forward in faith. God, I pray that we would be a church filled with people who are seeking wisdom, who are seeking people who are going to bless us and not harm us. God, above all things, I pray that you would make us brave. I pray that you would make us courageous, God, as we go. And Lord, I pray that tonight, even as we sing, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would bless us as we go, and that, God, you would be honored and glorified in every area of our life to the glory of your name. And we pray this in Jesus' name.